Trump campaign national spokesperson Katrina Pearson is in Dallas. Hi, Katrina. Hi, great so, to be here. Thanks so much for joining us. Mr. Trump has clinched the GOP nomination. Why not debate Senator Sanders? What is he afraid of? Well, he's not afraid. And, you know, as circumstances change, a leader needs to be able to change. And prior to, to agreeing to this possibility, he was just the presumptive nominee. And now that he has secured enough delegates to be the Republican nominee, it just doesn't make sense anymore. Mr. Trump should be now debating the Democrat nominee. But why entertain the idea then? Because he wasn't the nominee yet. I mean, this was something that many of us were excited about. We would love to be able to have the opportunity to talk to Bernie Sanders supporters in that venue to talk about where Mr. Trump and Sanders agree uh, on the issues with the, with the exception of how to get and accomplish those goals. Uh, unfortunately, after that, uh, Mr. Trump secured enough delegates. He is the Republican nominee. And now it just makes sense for him to debate the Democrat nominee. I want to ask you about comments Mr. Trump made in San Diego Friday about the judge in a lawsuit against Trump University. Let's take a listen. I have a judge who is a hater of Donald Trump. A hater. He's a hater. His name is Gonzalo Curiel. So what happens is the judge, who happens to be, we believe, Mexican, which is great. I think that's fine. You know what? I think the Mexicans are going to end up loving Donald Trump when I give all these jobs, okay? Katrina, what purpose did that serve, Mr. Trump pointing out Judge Curiel's ethnicity? Oh, mainly because what we do see at a lot of these rallies, the, the anti-Trump protesters who are anti-American protesters, defacing public property, assaulting police officers, flying the Mexican flag. And the one thing the media continues uh, to not report, particularly with this judge, is not only was he an Ob Obama appointee, but if you look at number nine on his judicial questionnaire, he's also a member of the La Raza Association of Lawyers, which you see a lot of those signs out there who are Trump haters belong to La Raza. So you you believe this judge cannot be fair because of his ethnicity? Well, I'm not quite sure what this judge is doing. I do know that there was there was supposed to be a hearing with Trump University last summer, but this judge decided to wait it out. Uh, why he did that, no one really knows. But I think uh, many Republicans and Americans know just how detrimental it can be if you do get an activist judge on the bench. And I think we all know by now that uh, Barack Obama is definitely putting activist judges on the bench. But to be clear, Katrina, you are not saying that Mr. Trump is suggesting this judge cannot be fair because of his ethnic background. That's not what Mr. Trump is suggesting by pointing out his ethnicity. Now, Mr. Trump is pointing out that this particular judge uh, does not like Mr. Trump, and there is a concern that he is an activist on the bench. All right. In a recent poll, 79 percent of Latino voters viewed Mr. Trump very unfavorably, but he still says that they are going to go for him. Uh, what do you make, though, of some of the reaction that you have seen out with these demonstrations, and then you combine that with some of the things that Mr. Trump has said, doesn't that have the net effect, essentially, of alienating uh, Latino voters even more? No, I don't think so, uh, simply because we, there's a lot of time left, and Mr. Trump is going to take his message uh, on the campaign trail. Uh, we do know that the media goes out of its way to pull Mr. Trump out of context, and the best way to fight back against that is to continue to have these rallies and get his message out there. I think you're going to see a lot of endorsements coming uh, from the Latino community that, that can articulate correctly what Mr. Trump has been saying, considering the media continues to pull him out of context. And I think those numbers will shift. Because at the end of the day, Americans, regardless of your ethnicity or gender, they want a secure country. They want jobs. They want a strong economy. They want to be safe at home. So national security is important. And when you have someone like Donald Trump running against Hillary Clinton, uh, I think you're going to have a clear contrast there in November. Uh, I want to give you, Katrina, the opportunity to set the record straight. You say the media has pulled things out of context when it comes to Mr. Trump's comments regarding Latinos. What specific examples are you thinking of? Well, for example, the, the only quote that you hear out of an entire speech that Mr. Trump gave is that he called Mexicans racist, which, by the way, uh, the Department of Homeland Security statistics does show that there are rapists coming into this country and also that ICE has been releasing criminal alien rapists back into society. But you don't play the rest of the clip where he says that there are some good people coming as well. This is also a humane issue. Getting our southern border under control is a humane issue, and it will help with jobs and it will help with wages. Just another example is we hear about the Muslim ban, where the media constantly talks about 
all Muslims being banned from coming into the country, and that's simply not the case. Every single media outlet in this country received the exact same policy. It was an immigration policy, but yet you hear the media talking about people serving in the military or Americans abroad coming home, and, and none of those people immigrate back to their home country. This was specifically with regards to, to Muslims entering this country that had no documentation. We could not find out where they were coming from, and it was a temporary halt until we could find a process to properly vet people, but you never hear the media talk about that. What about New Mexico's governor, Susana Martinez? Mr. Trump drew heavy criticism from many in his own party for attacking her. Uh, you know, she's a Republican. She also happens to be the nation's first Latino governor. Why would Mr. Trump go after a popular governor in a swing state? Well, I think a lot of people still don't understand that Donald Trump uh, has transcended party. Um, and he is a counter puncher. He will respond in kind. And that's exactly what we saw here. He was reading statistics from the state of New Mexico uh, that showed that there needs some work there. When, when there's uh, so many people who are either unemployed or on food stamps, that's a problem. He simply just pointed that out. Mr. Trump does not see race or gender as the media tries to, to perpetuate. He sees everyone the same and treats everyone the same. And therefore, if he's criticized, he's not just going to sit there and be criticized like most Republican candidates in the past. He's actually going to fight back, and that's one of the reasons why so many people in this country are going to Donald Trump. Mr. Trump said Friday he will make a big play in California uh, in the general. The state has the largest Hispanic population in the country and is considered a solid win for Democrats. How does Mr. Trump expect to realistically go after the Latino vote there? Well, I think Mr. Trump has been underestimated uh, since he entered this race. He's been breaking records. Um, throughout his entire process uh, of running for the GOP nomination. And again, once we get out there and start campaigning against Hillary Clinton uh, post conventions, uh, the contrast is going to be there and it's going to be very clear. People are going to see that Mr. Trump is not the enemy. What we are talking about here is not about party versus party anymore. This is the people versus the establishment ruling class of which Hillary Clinton is the poster child. Uh, finally, you know, there were protests, of course, again, outside Mr. Trump's rally in San Diego Friday. 35 were arrested. Is the campaign concerned about how these protests might escalate during the general? Well, we suspect that this will be uh, a continuing uh of what we've been seeing simply because a lot of these organizations uh, who are actually nonprofits receiving federal money are organizing these efforts. And we also know that uh, these are not Trump supporters. These are people who support Hillary Clinton or support Bernie Sanders. And it's those two individuals that need to address what's happening in this country. Because at the end of the day, sure, you should be able to show up. You should be able to, to, to voice your opinion and even protest but protesting peacefully. These individuals are breaking the law and should be prosecuted accordingly. Katrina Pearson, thank you so much. Great to be here, thank you.